Greetings wherever you are. My name is uh, Matthew Zokot and I take this chance to welcome you to episode 12 of the Corporate Law Tunnel. Now, in this episode 12, I discuss the legal regime of foreign direct uh, investments in Kenya with a special case study of the China Square Mall saga, which is a story item that has occupied, I believe, most of the news headlines for the past three or four days. Now, this legal regime that I'm going to discuss, I have actually uh, analyzed in my book, The Law of Corporate Finance in Kenya, uh, chapter 25, particularly from pages uh, 557 to 562. Now, this book is available, as you can see even from my flag, it's the same book on my flag. Uh, it is available uh, both online, you can order it online uh, from ML Publishers website, which is www.mlpublishers.co.ke, or you can simply walk to ML uh, Publishers offices of Jaka uh, Kikwete Road, De La Mea Flats, uh, Block D31, and then you get your copy, All right? So uh, that's the regime that I'll discuss today with a special case study of uh, the news items. I will focus my study on a news item which is current uh, in the Daily Nation newspaper for, ten, for, for Tuesday, uh, that is to, today, Tuesday, February 28, 2023. It is titled Mount Kenya Traders Put Root to Gashagwa in Atai Sports. Now the gist of this story is that uh, there is a Chinese retail investor in Kenya called China Square uh, that uh, is reported to be offering uh, retail items at uh, highly subsidized cost and that has not gone down with the local traders. Uh, there have been some uh, you know, intended government intervention, some of which have been expressed and the ones that stood out for me is reported that uh, one of the cabinet secretaries uh, already, you know, uh, asked a vice chancellor of the university hosting the mall where this retail trade operates uh, to take over the, the lease and hand it over to these local traders of that particular premise. Now, there is also another thing that stood out for me for purposes of today's uh, discussion is that there is a, an ongoing uh, investigation uh, by anti-counterfeit agency, SEA, over you know, some suspected uh, uh, dealings in counterfeit products uh, of one of the suppliers of this Chinese retail trader. Right? Now, there are very many uh, issues that are particularly uh, some of the comments that uh, the managing director of uh, uh, this China Square Mall has uh, uh, you know, communicated, uh, largely complaining about uh, you know, what he perceives to be, to be harassment. Now, um, that actually forms the gist of, of our story. And when you talk about the uh, foreign direct uh, investor, you are talking of actually non Kenyans who uh, are admitted and establish themselves to do business in Kenya. Uh, they are protected at two levels. Of course, they are protected under our own Kenyan laws, but there is an additional protection which they always uh, enjoy through what are called uh, investment treaties. Now, these investment treaties can be between two countries. Uh, if they are between two countries, we call them bilateral investment treaties. Uh, at times, the investment treaties are uh, among different countries. For for instance, it can be a regional investment treaty, for instance, within the ESC, SADC, uh, or maybe a continental-wide uh, you know, investment treaty. So those are called multilateral investment treaty. Now, uh, <clears throat> so other than our Kenyan laws, uh, this particular retail trader, uh, is disclosed as a Chinese and it's good to I'll just point out at the outset that there is actually an investment treaty between Kenya and China. That it is called the agreement between the government of the People's Republic of China 
and the Government of the Republic of Kenya on promotion and protection of investments. It was signed on 16th of July 2001. The, ratific the ratification process for this uh, treaty is ongoing, but it's already signed. It's already signed between the Kenyan government and the Chinese government. Now, there are a number of obligations that actually draw from these investment treaties. Of course, the reality is, um, uh, much as yes, there is a, a local you know, enforcement protection mechanism uh, under exclusively under the Kenyan laws for not just not just the local traders but also foreign traders. There is always the you know the fear that uh, local traders may enjoy some preferential advantage over these foreign uh, investors. So to protect these foreign investment, there is always another layer of investment which. Uh, you know, the, the country of origin of this foreign investor and now the host country, which in this case is Kenya, may enter into so that uh, whatever investment that uh, these foreign investors, uh, you know, uh, put up in Kenya uh, can be protected. Now, um, <clears throat> their obligations are drawn from these treaties and I'll discuss them in likely four strands in a very summarized way. There are so many issues that we may not have the time to discuss in full. The first one is that it's called the right of um, the right of uh, the freedom of establishment. Now, uh, and and this concerns really the admission. How do you admit? How do you and once you admit, how does this foreign investor establish itself uh, in a host country? Uh, in in a very technical sense, here we are talking of is there in place, for instance, a regulatory framework uh, in the host country that facilitates the admission and establishment? You know of these um, uh, foreign investors and in Kenya we have two primary uh, regulatory local regulatory frameworks uh, one of them is FIPA uh, foreign investment protection act and then IPA which is investment protection uh, investment promotions act there is a subsidiary legislation also which actually mirrors these investment treaties is, is, is found under the Foreign Investment and Protection Act. It's called a Declaration of Special Arrangements for the Reciprocal Promotion and Protection of Investments. So, these, these, in terms of the first obligation,